Good day, class. Uh, thank you for attending your lecture. This would be the first lesson to your immunology and serology. So during the discussion, if you have any questions or clarifications, you can type it in the chat box or you can raise your hand. I will post the, I will pause the recording and I'll answer your questions. So this would be the introduction to your immunosero. So MLS 17 class is one of the part or one of the board subjects that you will be taking. It is partner with your immunohema in your immunohematology. Immunohematology class is also known as your blood banking, which you will also tackle this semester. So magpartner ang immunosero at ang inyong immunohema. So let's begin. Now, immunology class would refer or would refer to the resistance to disease, is specifically infectious disease class. Basically, pag pinasimple natin to class, immunology would refer to the study on how the body fights disease. Kapag nagkaroon ka ng bacterial infection, nagkaroon ka ng viral infection, nagkaroon ka ng fungal infection, ano-ano ba yung mga different substances? What are the different substances? Cells and chemicals that would act against these foreign substances. So let me repeat, immunology, one of its definition would refer to the resistance to disease, a specifically infectious disease. If we simplify this, this would refer to the study on how the body would fight diseases. It would involve what are the different substances, cells, and chemicals that would act against this foreign substances. Now, immunology class would consist of different definitions. One of those is that it would refer to the study of the molecules, the cells, the organs, and the systems responsible for the recognition and disposal of foreign or non-self material. Ano-ano daw yung mga molecules, cells, organs, and systems responsible na pumapatay class or nakaka-recognize ng mga foreign. When you say foreign, this would also refer to non-self, meaning different or unrecognized by the body. Hindi siya normally present sa body natin. And when you say foreign or non-self material class, this would typically involve your bacteria, your viruses, and your fungi. So ano daw yung action ng body mo on how they would recognize and dispose this foreign non-self material? If you still remember sa hematology nyo, ano-ano ba yung mga cells na nag-recognize saka nag-dispose ng mga to? One of those is yung mga white blood cells niya. Diba, if you still remember, ang lymphocytes niya. If you remember in your hematology, lymphocytes would act against viruses. Well, ang neutrophil niya, they are more common among bacterial, bacterial infection or bacteria. So that's one of the definition of your immunology. Now it also would refer to the study of how body components would respond and interact. The study of the desirable and undesirable consequences of immune interaction. For every immune interaction class, let's say, nagkaroon ka ng bacterial infection. An example of a bacterial infection class, kunwari nagkaroon ka ng strep throat or ng sore throat. 
If you have a strep throat or a sore throat, this could be caused by your streptococcus. Your strep pyogenes, di ba? Streptococcus pyogenes nyo. And what would happen is that your body would activate its immune system. And one of the cells involved in that is your neutrophils. So ano ba yung mangyayari, class? What are the consequences when this neutrophil would attack would attack the streptococcus pyogenes. What are the desirable and undesirable consequences? And for you to have an idea, kapag nagkaroon ka nga ng strep throat class, in some individual, kapag nagkaroon ka ng sore throat, nagkaroon ka ng strep throat, at naging active yung immune system mo, one of the undesirable consequences dito is that you could have fever. When you have a fever, it is a sign that your body is undergoing inflammation. And it is also a sign that your body is fighting against the bacterial or the, non or the foreign organisms. So let me repeat. Immunology would also be the study of the desirable and undesirable consequences of immune interaction. Such as when you have your sore throat, your neutrophil would attack your bacteria S. pyogenes, and that could lead to fever and inflammation, which we will tackle further on the coming modules, specifically module 4. Then it would also consist of the study of the ways in which the immune system can be advantageously manipulated to protect against or treat disease. Tayo class as mga medical technologists and even future scientists, ang ginagawa natin, we would tend to manipulate the immune system. And one way to do this or one of the experiments na ginawa nila was that they were able to create vaccines. So that's when one of the substances that, that the scientists use to protect against or treat disease. Aside from vaccine, pwede rin yung mga na tawag nating toxoids. Sino dito class yung nagkaroon na ng tetano? Or natusok ng alambre na may kalawang, nasugatan sa yero, or one of the requirements kapag nagkaroon ka is that you'd be administered with a tetanos toxoid. Still remember in your bacteriology, this caused by your clostridium tetan. So that's one way you would protect or treat disease. Now, let's go to the history of immunology class. Now, one of the known uh, historians for your his, uh, immunology is Thucydides class. Now, Thucydides class would uh, involve the concept of immunity from disease, at least to Greece in the 5th century BC. If you're wondering, class, ang bansang Greece dati, during the... Asian civilization. Greece was known also as the cradle, the cradle of civilization. Diyan yung mga scientists na kilala that they would discover a lot of things that are still applicable now, nowadays. Sila Aristotle and so on. Now, one of the, one of the scientists or one of the known uh, individuals during the 5th century was Thucydides. Si Thucydides class would introduce an idea Nag-introduce siya ng idea or concept ng immunity. He recorded individuals who contracted the plague at that time and those who recovered would became immune or exempt. Now, ano ba tong plague na to, class? If you still remember, ang plague nyo or yung black plague nyo was caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis. Now, this was usually transmitted by rodents, mga daga. What would happen is yung mga daga class, they would bite, they would urinate, and they can infect individuals. Now, sabi ni Tucydides dati daw, he was able to identify people who recovered from the plague would become immune or example. In bawa class, kunwari si patient A, Example, si patient A became infected. Became infected with plague. 
on January. He recovered and when patient A got beaten got beaten by a rat in March. He did not manifest the disease. Meaning, nung hindi nag-manifest or hindi lumabas yung sakit class, hindi siya nagkasakit, he became immune or exempt na notice daw ni Tosidides yan. Let me repeat. Tosidides class was able to identify people who contracted the plague and when they recovered, they would become immune or exempt. An example is kunwari si patient A na infect ng plague ng January. Now, this would be transmitted by rats. Now, si patient A again, nakagat ng daga nung March. Now, nung March class, nakagat ulit siya. This time, walang kahit anong symptoms, walang kahit anong signs ng disease nag-manifest. Therefore, the patient A became immune or exempt. Basically, class, sabi dito sa theory na to, na kapag daw nagkasakit ka once, mataas ang chance na hindi na daw hindi ka na daw magkakasakit ng same disease the next time. Or so that theory goes. Parang sa COVID class, sabi nila, kapag daw nagka-COVID ka na once, rarely, rarely na magkakaroon ka ng COVID on the second time. Or so the theory goes. Unless there would be a different strain. Kung different strain yan, syempre mataas ang chance na ma magkakaroon ka ng infection. So I hope that was clear. Now, uh, the earliest recognized attempt to intentionally induce immunity class to an infectious disease was in the 10th century China. Where they practice class, so yung pinakauna talaga na trinay ng tao na mag-induce ng immunity was in the 10th century in China. Where they practice class, what we call variolation. No? Ano ba tong variolation na to? A variolation class is the exposure of healthy people to material from lesions caused by disease. So alimbawa class, meron kang sakit na chicken pox. Ang gagawin mo, you would get material from the lesions. Diba pag may chicken pox ka class, may mga lesions ka, may mga butlig-butlig ka. You would have lesions kapag may chicken pox ka. Kukuha ka daw ng material dun sa lesions na yan, and then you would introduce it through the body. Now, there are two ways. You would do it by putting it under the skin or introducing it into the nose. So imagine class, kukuha ka ng ano, ng... So para mag-gets nito. This is an example class of your tinatawag natin uh, smallpox. This was a very common disease dati. Smallpox is related to your chickenpox class. So that they would do is that they would get, kukuha sila dito sa mga postules na to. They would get this and they would introduce it either through the skin or they would take it and introduce it through the nose. And ang iniisip nila, this was one way they could induce immunity. So that's your variolation. So let me repeat. Variolation class was the process of introducing material caused by the disease either under the skin or into the nose. Kadiri, di ba? Imagine mo kung gagawin, kung ginagawa pa natin yan nowadays. Kawawa naman yung patient class, di ba? Buti meron na tayong vaccination, which would be done via intramuscular. Okay, let's continue. Now, another noteworthy figure class was Lady Mary Wortley Montagu. Now, si Lady, Wortley, Lady Mary Wortley Montagu class was... Uh, Asawa to ng ambassador ng England sa Turkey. She was the wife of the ambassador of England to Turkey. Now, si Lady Mary Wortley Montagio class promoted variolation in England 
and had her surgeon violate her four-year-old daughter in the presence of the king's physician. Now, the surgeon, Charles Maitland, was given leave to perform what came to be known as the Royal Experiment, in which he violated six condemned prisoners who later survived. So, si Lady Mary Wortley Montague was the one who introduced variolation class sa Europe, specifically sa England. And yung surgeon niya, si Charles Maitland, was known to perform yung tinatawag nating royal experiment in which he used six condemned prisoners who later survived. Now, another noteworthy figure, si Edward Jenner class. Now, Edward Jenner would inoculate or inoculate an individual known as James Pips with material obtained from a cowpox lesion that appeared on the hand of a dairy maid. Now, ano ba tong cowpox na to class? Ito yun. Ayan. Cowpox class is typically present. Please write this down or take note of this. Cowpox is typically present in cows specifically sa kanyang others, U-D-D-E-R-S. When you say others, yung parang, what's the term? Nipples or utong nung baka class or utong ng kalabaw. Now, they would manifest in the others of, others of uh, cows. Now, this is a considered class as a zoonotic disease. When you say zoonotic, it would usually affect animals only. So, hindi siya nakakakos ng sakit sa, sa tao. So, that's your cowpox. Cowpox would, is a type of, uh, this is a type of smallpox class that would affect cows. Specifically, yung others, yung UDDERS or the nipples of the cows. Now, this is a zoonotic disease that would typically affect animals specifically the cow. Now, ang ginawa ni Jenner class, kumuha siya ng cowpox lesion na nakita sa hand ng dairy maid. And using that cowpox lesion class, he introduced it to an individual known as James Pips. Now, six weeks later, he inoculated James Pips with smallpox. Ininoculate niya ngayon this time Ininoculate naman niya this time ng smallpox posture si James Pips. And this time, it didn't produce the disease. Although this experiment justifiably lacked an appropriate control, further studies by Jenner established the efficacy of his vaccination procedure. Class, ito kasi. Tandaan nyo ta, whenever we would talk about vaccination, vaccination would be typically would be inducing, inducing or creating immunity by using a weakened, a weakened form of the pathogen. Let me repeat. Ang vaccination nyo class is inducing or creating immunity by using a weakened form of the pathogen. Ang weakened form ng pathogen nyo dito class is yung cowpox. Now, nung inintroduce yung cowpox class kay James Pips, it developed immunity. That is why class, nung nag-introduce na ng smallpox disease sa kanya, it didn't produce disease. Meaning, James Pips would become immune. Let me repeat para clear. Si Edward Jenner class was one of the people or the scientists that established the efficacy of the vaccination procedure. Now, vaccination class is simply inducing or creating immunity by using a weakened form of the pathogen. Yung weakened form na ginamit niya dito is yung cowpox na nakuha niya sa dairy maid. Nung inoculate niya yung cowpox lesion na yun kay James Pips, 
it produces immunity. That is why, nung ininoculate na niya ng smallpox, hindi na nagproduce ng disease, Be making James Pips immune to the disease. Now, here's a review question. Give two ways on how variolation class was introduced to the body. If you want to answer, please raise your hand. This would also serve as your attendance grade. So, variolation class was introduced. This can be introduced into two ways via inserting it into the skin or inserting it into the nose. So, those were the two ways on how variolation was introduced via the skin and via the nose. Let's continue. So this is an example class of your smallpox lesions. Technically class, ang smallpox nyo is considered extinct. And ang cost ng extinction na yan is si Edward Jenner. If naalala nyo pa sa lesson 1 or sa module 1 nyo sa bacteriology, he was the one who caused the extinction of this smallpox. And ito yung cowpox. Now, let's go to the difference between variolation and vaccination. Now, variolation class would use the actual smallpox virus, virus to protect the people. While vaccination by Jenner used the far less dangerous cowpox virus. So, ito yung sinasabi ko class that he used a weakened pathogen or a weakened version of the pathogen. So let me repeat, variolation would use the actual smallpox virus to protect people or induce immunity, while vaccination by Jenner used the far less dangerous cowpox virus. Now let's go to another scientist, si Louis Pasteur. Now si Louis Pasteur class observed by chance that older bacterial cultures would not cause disease in chickens. Okay. Si Louis Pasteur class, he experimented with the bacteria known as your Pasteurella multocida. Pastor, Pasteurella multocida is known to cause your chicken cholera. So what he did was he used uh, cultures of Pasteurella multocida and he would inoculate the older cultures. So let me repeat, si Louis Pasteur class, he would use P. Maltosita, the one that's known to cause your chicken cholera. He observed that when he used older cultures, it would not cause disease in chickens. Now, subsequent injection of a more virulent organism had no effect on the birds that had been previously exposed to the older culture. So yung mga or yung mga ibon daw class or yung mga chicken na na-introduce niya ng older bacterial culture would now become immune. Kasi nung nilagyan niya na or nung finalo up niya na or inintroduce niya na ng more virulent or younger or fresher colonies ng P. multocida, it had no effect on the chickens that was introduced with the older bacterial culture. In this manner, the first attenuated vaccine was discovered, and this was considered the birth of immunology. When you say class attenuated, this is considered a weakened. The other definition of attenuated is weakened. Kaya pag tinanong kayo sa exam, what is the definition of attenuated? It would refer to weekend. So, nung inintroduce class, ganito nangyari niya. No? Ganwari, ito yung, ito yung chicken. When the chicken class was introduced with older culture, na-introduce siya ng older, older culture class, 
the body's immune system the body's immune system was able to prevent disease leading to immunity leading to immunity now dahil dahil nakapag-recover ka agad yung chicken dun sa sa older bacterial bacterial strains it became immune that is why class nung nag-introduce na siya ng more virulent organism it had no effect and itong mga older bacterial cultures are considered weakened may hina sila class but imagine nyo, what if, imagine, ah, what if you use immediately a more virulent organism? Obviously, that would cause a disease. So, si Louis Pasteur yung basically one of the first who discovered the first attenuated toxin. Using your Pasteurella multocida, known to cause your chicken cholera. Now, review question. What bacteria was used by Edward Jenner in his experiment on chickens? So the answer for this class is your pasteurella multocida. This is the one known to cause your chicken cholera. Now let's go to the significant milestones in your immunology. So in 1798, Edward Jenner was the one to discover smallpox vaccination. 1880 to 1881, Louis Pasteur discovered the live attenuated chicken cholera as well as anthrax vaccine. In 1883 to 1905, Eli Mechnikov discovered the cellular theory of immunity through phagocytosis. Itong theory na to class stated that certain cells are capable of producing immunity and they would do this via phagocytosis and as you all know yung dalawang cell known to cause phag or capable of causing phagocytosis are your neutrophils your monocyte or your macrophage this was mentioned i believe in your hematology Yung neutrophil nyo, yung monocyte and macrophages nyo, sila yung uh, cells known to cause immunity. So let me repeat, sa cellular theory of immunity, it was mentioned that cells are capable of producing immunity through phagocytosis. Siyempre, class, phagocytosis would kill, would kill the organism via cell eating. So i-engulf nila yung bacteria or yung foreign pathogen. Then in 1885, Louis Pasteur developed the first therapeutic vaccination and the first report of live attenuated vaccine for rabies virus. Then in 1890, Emil von Bering and Shiba Saburo Kitasato proposed what you call the humoral theory of immunity. Now, ano ba tong humoral theory of immunity? <coughs> Whenever you would hear the word humoral class, this is a theory that states that antibodies, the antibodies would cause immunity. Antibodies are the one known to cause immunity. And in 1891, Robert Koch, would use or discover the demonstration of cutaneous delayed type hypersensitivity. Then in 1894, Jules Bourdais developed or discovered the complement system. 
which we will tackle plus in your module coming modules. 1897, Robert Koss discovered precipitation. This will be tackled in your laboratory class. 1900, Paul Ehrlich, the antibody formation theory. Charles Richet in 1902 discovered immediate hypersensitivity. Paul Portier 1902 then discovered anaphylaxis. 1903, Maurice Artus or the Artus reaction, discovered the Artus reaction of intermediate hypersensitivity. Here's a question class. Humoral immunity would refer to the production of what substance class? So the answer to this question, humoral, whenever you would hear your humoral immunity, this would involve the production of what we call antibodies. Antibodies. Then in 1903, Wright and Douglas discovered opsonization. 1938, John Richardson Marak discovered the hypothesis of antigen antibody binding or the lattice formation. In 1944, Medawar discovered the immunologic process in transplantation. So in transplantation class, there is also a immunologic process. Hindi lang basta-basta kayong kukuha ng organ and you would transplant it. No, there is a matching that needs to be done. And this was discovered by Medawar. Then in 1949, Jonas Salk and Albert Bruce Sabin was responsible for the development of your polio vaccine. Walter Reed discovered the vaccine against yellow fever. In 1953, the graft versus host reaction was discovered. Now, whenever you would hear the graft versus host reaction, GVH class, this would refer to when your body would reject a transplanted transplanted organ that's one of the reactions class kapag hindi tinanggap ng katawan natin yung transplanted organ this is known as the graft versus host reaction and then in 1957 Frank McFarlane Burnet discovered the clonal selection theory in 1964 to 1968 T-cell and B-cell cooperation in immune response was discovered. In 1972, Gerald M. Edelman and Rodney R. Porter discovered the structure of antibodies. 1975, George Kohler and Cesar Milstein discovered the first monoclonal antibody or hybridoma technology. And then in 1980, Baruj Benaseraf, Jean Dosset, and George Snell discovered the major histocompatibility complex, which we will tackle class in the, fi in the finals. Now, review question. He introduced class the immunologic process in transplantation. So the answer to this question class is C, Medawar. He discovered or introduced the immunologic process in transplantation. Then in 1983 and 84, Luke Mutangier and Robert Gallo discovered HIV. 85 to 87, identification of genes for T-cell receptor. 1986, monoclonal hepatitis B vaccine was discovered. 1986, Tim Mossman also discovered your T-Helper 1 versus your T-Helper 2 model of the T-Helper cell function. Then in 1987, Susumoto Negawa discovered antibody diversity. 96 to 98, identification of toll-like receptor. And in 2001, the FOXP3, the gene directing regulatory T-cell was discovered. And 2005, Fraser 
was able to discover the development of your human papilloma virus vaccine. Itong human papilloma virus na to class, this is also known as your HPV. And this is known to cause your warts and your cervical cancer. That is why for ladies, sa mga babae, even sa guys, it is recommended you have this vaccine to prevent the development of warts. And for the ladies, which is more common, ang cervical CA. So Fraser was the one who discovered that. Now let's go to some definition of terms sa immunology. Now immunity class would refer to resistance to infectious agents, foreigns, foreign particles, toxins, living cells, and even cancer cells. So this is very self-explanatory. I've already explained this class. This is how your body would reject or fight off against any foreign pathogen. Now, immunity class would further be subdivided into two types. We have your active immunity and your passive immunity. Now, when you say active immunity class, please take note of this. This is the immunity resulting from natural exposure to an infectious agent or administration of a vaccine. Now, ang active immunity in your class and your passive immunity could further be differentiated into the natural and the artificial. Sabi dito, ha, intindihin niyo yung active. Ha? Active immunity would be immunity resulting from natural exposure to an infectious agent or administration of a vaccine. So, it's either natural or artificial. Kapag natural siya class, this, you would get this type of immunity when you recover. Please take this down. When you recover from a disease. Unwari ako, class, nagkaroon ako ng COVID this day. Naka-recover ako after one week. Mataas yung chance that I will be immune the next time. That because I was able to recover from the disease. And another one, the artificial, would be via vaccination class. For the vaccination class, for the vaccination, this is the artificial, meaning you are manipulating or creating immunity via vaccination. Halimbawa, today, nabakunahan ako against COVID. The next time magkaroon ako ng COVID virus or infection, mataas ang chance that I will not develop the disease. Then we also have your passive immunity. This is a type of immunity that results from the transfer of antibodies from the immunized host to a non-immune individual. This would typically involve class yung mga toxoids or mga toxins. We will tackle this further in your module. But for now, I'm giving you a brief uh, introduction to these terms. Kapag passive immunity class, merong transfer. Pero kapag active immunity, you are the one creating your immunity via natural or artificial. So let me repeat, kapag passive immunity, may transfer class of antibodies to create immunity. Pero kapag active immunity, you are the one creating immunity or creating antibodies via natural or artificial active immunity. Then, another types of immunity, we have your adaptive immunity. This is a type of resistance that is characterized by a specificity for each individual pathogen or microbial agent. And the ability to remember a prior exposure, which would result in an increased response to that pathogen upon repeated exposure. Plus, pakiintindi itong adaptive immunity. There is the word specificity for individual pathogen. Kaya this one, 
kapag adaptive immunity class, this would mainly refer to antibodies. Antibodies class would only target, they would only target a specific, when you say specific, isa lang. They would only target a specific pathogen. Kaya nga, class, pag nag-name kayo ng antibodies, they would usually name it after the disease. Halimbawa, class, if you've encountered your anti-hepatitis A virus, there is the word anti-HAB. These are antibodies that would target hepatitis A virus only. And for every exposure class, the body would remember. Naaalala ng body yung disease na yun. Nambawa, ako, nagkaroon ako class ng COVID this week. The next week, gumaling ako. After six months, nagka-COVID ako. Anong six months na yun, naalala ng body ko na, ah, ito yun, ito yung COVID virus ulit na yun. That is why the next time na nagka-COVID ako, there would be an increase response to that pathogen. Mas madaling malalabanan ng body natin yung, yung virus na yun or yung pathogen. While your innate or natural immunity would refer to the ability of the individual to resist infection by means of normally present body function. Meaning class, kung ano yung innate, when you say innate, within. Kung ano yung meron ng tao. Kung ano yung mga meron ng tao that could provide immunity or resist infection. Example of that class is yung skin, yung saliva, yung tears, even your blood which contains your white blood cells are part of your innate natural immunity. Let's continue. Here's a review question, class. Neutrophils are part of which immunity? So this is part of your innate or your natural immunity. Now another one is your antibody class. So para magets yun ano ba tong antibodies na to? Antibodies class are glycoproteins. If you still remember in your clinical chemistry, ang antibodies nyo are also known as your gamma. Globulins. They are also known as your gamma globulins. And they are produced by your B cell, also known as your B lymphocytes and plasma cell, in response to foreign substance exposure. Antibodies are also known as immunoglobulins. Now, what you need to remember here, class, ang antibodies nyo are typically y shaped if you take a look at the picture, ito yung itsura nila. Yan. These are your antibodies to red one. Now, here you would be able to see a bacterial cell. Now, ano ba tong bacterial cell na to? Please take note of this. We have the term antigen. Antigen class is a macromolecule capable of eliciting formation of immunoglobulins or synthesized cells in an immune no competent host. So, sabi dito, si antigen nyo daw class are the ones responsible for the formation of antibodies or immunoglobulin in an immunocompetent host. Basically, class, ang antigen nyo are the known also as the foreign pathogens. That is why your bacterial cell is also known as an antigen. Let me repeat. Si antigen nyo is a macromolecule 
capable of causing the formation of antibodies or sensitized cells in an immunocompetent host. Meaning, class C, antigen nyo is the foreign pathogen. Pwede siyang bacteria, pwede siyang virus, pwede siyang fungi, and any foreign particle. Siya yung inaatake ng antibodies. Here's a review question. Describe the appearance of your antibodies. Antibodies would typically appear as Y shape. And let's go to another term class. Meron tayong tinatawag na affinity and avidity. Affinity class, please take note, is the initial force of attraction that would exist between a fab site on an antibody and an epitope or a determinant site on the corresponding Antigen. Okay. Ito yung antibody structure nyo, class. Ito y shape yan. Now, dito sa dulo, at the end of the Y shape, we have the so-called fab site. The other name of the fab site is also known as the paratope. Then here, you also have your antigen. Itong, itong kulay red na to. This is your bacteria, your virus, or your fungi. This is the antigen class. Now, si antigen nyo class, they have what you call an epitope. Ano ba tong mga epitope na to class? Epitopes are also known as receptors. What happens here class, as mentioned in the definition ng apinitin nyo, this is the initial force of attraction. Meaning, class, ma-attract yung antibody sa antigen. They would attract or they would connect. They would connect via the fab site. So, itong fab site. The fab site class would attach to the epitope, also known as the determinant site, to the antigen. So, yan yung affinity. So let me repeat. Affinity refers to the strength of a single antibody-antigen interaction. Each IgG antigen binding site typically has high affinity for its target. So yan ang affinity class. The initial force of attraction between the fab site of the antibody and the epitope or determinant site to the antigen. While well, your avidity class, this is the strength with which a multivalent antibody would bind with a multivalent antigen. Now, pag sinabi mong multivalent antibody class, multivalent antibody would refer to many fab sites. Marami siyang fab sites. If you take a look at this picture, ito yung antibody nyo. If you look, take a look, ang dami niyang fab site class. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then, it would bind to a multivalent antigen. Kapag sinabi mong multivalent antigen, many epitopes. Madami siyang epitopes class. So, please take note of that. Avidity, only a single epitope, single fab site. Kapag avidity, madaming epitope, madaming fab site. Then we also have what you call immunologic tolerance. Pag sinabi mong immunologic tolerance class, this is how the body would control the immune system. Kasi hindi maganda class na overactive ang immune system natin. An overactive, please take note of this, an overactive immune system can lead to what we call autoimmune disorders. 
ang mga autoimmune disorders class as when your self cells, sarili mong cells, such as your antibodies, WBCs, would attack your body. Imagine mo yung antibodies mo would attack the red blood cell class. That could lead to hemolysis. And that could even lead to uh, hem hemolytic problems. So there are two types of immunologic tolerance. We have your central tolerance. Pag sinabi mong central tolerance class, this would involve the main lymphoid or the main, sorry, not the lymphoid organ. The main immune organs. Ang main, immo, immo, main immune, sorry, ang main immune organs nyo are, is the thymus and the bone marrow. So, central tolerance would involve the destruction of potentially self-reactive TNB cells as they mature in either the thymus or the bone marrow. Then we have your peripheral tolerance. This is the destruction or repression of lymphocytes in the peripheral lymphoid organs that could respond to cell antigens. Sa peripheral tolerance naman class, this would involve the secondary lymphoid organs such as the lymph node, the spleen, the lymph vessels. If aware kayo dun sa tinatawag nating Bayer's patches, which is, uh, I mean, I believe na turo yan sa anatomy nyo, which this can be found in the stomach sa intestines class. So sa peripheral tolerance, destruction or repression of lymphocytes in the peripheral organs that could lead to or respond to self-antigens. So pakitandaan, kapag central tolerance, it would involve the main immune organs, thymus and bone marrow. Kapag peripheral, it would involve the secondary lymphoid organs such as the spleen, the lymph node, lymph vessels, etc. Review question. Spleen is part of which immunologic tolerance? So the answer to this question is that it was involved in the peripheral tolerance class. Diba yung mga secondary lymphoid organs? In other terms, we have your epitope and your paratope. So as mentioned earlier, ang epitope nyo is also known as the determinate site. Ito yung nakikita sa antigen. This is the one or the, this is the receptor where the antibody would attach. Epitope is the key portion of the immunogen against the immune response in which the immune response is directed, also known as the determinant site. Then we have your paratope. Si paratope, yung class, is also known as yung FAB site, also called an antigen binding site and is a part of an antibody which would recognize and bind to an antigen. Then we have your antibody structure. Now, yung antibody structure in your class is composed of two chains. Dalawang chains yan. The light and the heavy chain. The light chain class is a small chain in an immunoglobulin that is bound to the larger chain by a disulfide bond. The two types of light chain are called kappa and lambda. Then we have your heavy chain, one of the polypeptide units that would make up an immunoglobulin molecule. Each immunoglobulin monomer consists of two heavy chains paired with two light chains. Okay, dito muna tayo sa heavy chain class. Ang heavy chain nyo class is this one, itong blue na to. This is the heavy chain. Now, the heavy chain class is partnered by a light chain dito. 
itong pula na to. This is your light chain. And they are connected, class. They are connected. Yung light chain nyo, naka-attach yan sa heavy chain by the presence of this so-called, this is connected, class. Dito, dito itong area na to. This is where you would find disulfide bonds. So in the coming module, itatakel natin yung mga parts niya. So that's your light chain and heavy chain. Please take note that your light chain has two types. The kappa light chain and the lambda light chain. Which, would tack, which we will tackle in the future. Then we also have your fab fragment and your FC fragment. Now, fab fragment is a fragment of an immunoglobulin molecule obtained by papain cleavage that consists of a light chain and one half of a heavy chain held together by disulfide bonding. While your FC fragment is a fragment of an immunoglobulin obtained by papain cleavage that consists of the carboxy terminal halves of two heavy chain. Now, para maalala nyo to class or maintindihan nyo to, dito muna tayo sa FC fragment. Sabi sa FC fragment, compose siya ng carboxy terminal halves of two heavy chain. Now, if you still remember in the previous slide, ito yung heavy chain nyo. So, kung i-compare natin dito, this is your heavy chain. Itong dalawang to, this would be your light chain. So, sabi dyan, FC fragment class is composed of halves of two heavy chain. Ito yung FC fragment nyo. So, I hope that was clear. Ha? Ito yung FC fragment nyo class. While your fab fragment class would consist of a light chain and one half daw of a heavy chain. So, ano ba yung one half ng heavy chain nyo? Ito. This is the one half of the heavy chain and a light chain. Therefore, class, you have this is your fab. Kaya pag tinanong kayo sa exam or sa quiz, how many fab sites are there in an antibody? Ang sagot nyo, dalawa. Kapag tinanong kayo, how many FC fragments are there in an antibody? Ang sagot nyo, isa lang. Yan o, dalawa yung fab fragment class. One half heavy, one half heavy, tapos may partner na light chain held together by disulfide bond. While your FC fragment is composed of two heavy chain. Review question. What connects the light chain and the heavy chain of the fab fragments of antibody? So the answer to this question, class, is your disulfide bond. It's the one that would connect the light chain and the heavy chain of the fag fragment of the antibody. Then we're on to the last slide. We have the human leukocyte antigen. These are protein coded for by the human MHC genes that has essential role in the immune response and the rejection of transplant of foreign transplant. Can it in class? Diba, whenever we would get blood transfusion, whenever we would get blood transfusion, we need to perform what we call blood typing and cross-matching. Ngayon, kapag kailangan kang salinan ng organ, you need you need to have and you need to be compatible with the human leukocyte antigen. HLA class is also known as what you call tissue typing. It is very important class in the rejection of foreign transplant. 
Kaya nga class, kapag kailangan kang salinan ng organ, you need to be compatible with this human leukocyte antigen, or also known as your tissue type. Then we have your cluster of differentiation. These are cell surface molecules expressed on leukocytes and other cells relevant for the immune system. Ang tatandaan nyo lang dito sa CD class, itong cell surface. These are basically proteins found. These are proteins found sa surface class. Sa surface ng inyong mga cells. So that's the, that's the cluster of differentiation. We will tackle this more in the coming modules. Now, uh, this isn't really as assignment class, but I do suggest, if you na niyo yung module 1 nyo, you would find their definition of terms. So, please try to read the other terms in our module 1 so that you would be familiar in the coming lessons. Let's say whether, whether we like it or not class, immunocero is really a very difficult topic. Pag hindi ka nakarelate sa mga terms niya, malilito ka. But I'll try my best to simplify this. This is already my third time teaching this subject. So hopefully by this time, medyo mapapadali ko na ma-explain sa inyo. So that ends the module 1. Thank you.